everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kat, and for today, we're gonna be doing a bit of a get ready with me with the Laguna palette from Glam Shop. Oh, there's all the sparkles, I'm already ready. We're gonna swatch this bad boy before I get into doing the eye look, and as I am doing the eye look, I wanted to talk about a few super hyped up foundations uh, that I've been testing out recently. So we have from Urban Decay, the Stay Naked Hydromaniac Foundation, which is one of them. Then we have from KVD Beauty, the Good Apple Foundation. Then we have from Fenty Beauty, the Blurring Skin Tint. And then we have from Chantikai, the Future Skin Cushion. I kind of wanted to talk with you guys about like what my thoughts are on each of those foundations because some of them are worth it, some of them are not, and I just kind of wanted to share some of my thoughts, find out what your guys' thoughts are, if you've tested out any of these, let you guys know what the price points are versus what you're actually getting. So we're just gonna, we're gonna talk through all of it. But first, the Laguna palette, which I am super duper excited for. Oh man. All right, we're gonna swatch this bad boy. Oh, I am, I am ready to swatch. <laughs> So the first shade is going to be Coral Jofitz, which is coral in Polish, and yet again we're off to an awesome start, because oh, what else would I be expecting from Glam Shop other than just absolute perfection? This guy is a bit more of a topper shade, a little bit more sheer, but has a really nice kind of icy white to yellowish gold shift on there. Then we have Ryski, which is heavenly, and... This is a very nice kind of coppery, goldish type shimmer. Also a little bit more on the sheer side, not quite as transparent as this guy, and definitely not so much of a shift. It's just more of staying at that nice orangey copper shade. Then we have Shipwith, which means inflow, and ooh, she is pretty. Okay, definitely has a bit more of a shift on this one. Similar level of transparency to this guy, but this one is a little bit more of like a gold to bluish green shift. Very, very nice. Definitely a little more similar to this guy than I was expecting, but the formula is slightly different in that it's a little bit more opaque to this guy. All right, next up we have the matte shade Rose Viesda, which means starfish. And that is just a very nice teal bluish shade. Really nice shade on there. Looks like it's gonna be able to build up really well with really nice opacity. Then we have Atoll, which is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is gonna be one of my favorite shades. It is a gold to green to blue shimmer. And that guy is definitely all of your mermaid vibes really really pretty and ooh so after putting that guy on i'm seeing a little bit more of like what looks almost kind of like a peachy pink undertone on this guy that i didn't see originally so that's really really nice and this guy is looking way more gold then we have the shade boginka which means nymph and okay that is looking like a very nice kind of pinkish coral shade. A little bit of some gold speckles on top with it as well. Then we have the shade Poivac, which means swimmer. And that is a very nice shimmery blue. A little bit more blue than this matte shade is. I would say that it doesn't have quite as much of a shimmer on there. It's just a really nice kind of medium blue tone shade. Then we have Laguna, which is definitely more of like a thicker consistency, and it is opaque. So that to me looks kind of like a very deep sea bluish green with a little bit of some gold speckle in there, but she she's very deep. <laughs> but that is a gorgeous shade. You can see a little bit of those gold speckles on there. A little bit of how it's like almost has like a little bit of like seaweed green type undertones with it but that's gonna be lovely for deepening up this look <laughs> all right and then the last shade is Rafa which is a very nice midnight blue matte shade Larsh blows and that is very very nice very deep I think that would partner really well with this guy but i mean i really like how all of the tones in this palette like you've got your very light topper type shades to medium tones to then your deeper tones 
So we're gonna have a lot of options with this guy, so I am super duper excited. So as I do the look, uh, I am gonna go ahead and tell you guys my thoughts on these different foundations because I have some thoughts and I really wanna know what you guys think if you guys have tested them out because I definitely feel like all of these to a certain degree had a decent amount of hype around them, especially this guy. Like, the amount of hype that I saw online with YouTubers and TikTokers alike is just crazy. And, <laughs> hmm, yeah, I <laughs> I don't know if I agree with it. Um, it. It did not go as great for me. So first off, the Good Apple Foundation from KVD Beauty, priced at $38, and with that, you get 0.35 ounces or 10 grams and mine is in the shade medium 039 and I do think that that was like slightly too deep of a shade for me just because it's huh, it did not quite work I would say it was probably like maybe two shades too deep but that was my own bad so as I was testing it out I kind of disregarded that um, just because, you know, pulling the wrong shade is my fault. And I do think that upon initial application, so the method that I found was the most effective was using a very dense foundation brush because I found that using just a sponge or fingers in some instances uh, did not work out as well. It uh, was a little bit more streaky. And so using a brush and then a damp sponge at the very end just to kind of pad everything out so that it was more even, I found was the method that worked best for me. It did have uh, more of a matte or satin type finish. And I definitely think that it applied medium to full coverage, not quite full coverage, but it was a definitely a decent amount of coverage on there that you're getting. But because of the matte nature of the finish after application, it looked very, very cakey. I don't like when my foundations look like I have a ton of it on my face. I prefer more natural finishes or hydrating finishes. For like the first hour or two, it it didn't look too bad and so I didn't mind it all that much but it was really after like the third or fourth hour where I was definitely not as much of a fan of it because it was really accentuating my pores on my face. It also was definitely like showing all of my fine lines and for whatever reason got like really really shiny which I was definitely not a fan of. It, it wasn't like a hydrating type look that you would get with other hydrating foundations. It was just very, very greasy where I definitely would have needed to grab a bit of a blurring powder or setting powder to try and fix it up, which for me is just way too much effort. And so I was not a huge fan of that at all. By like the, the four hour mark, it, it was so cakey, especially around my cheeks. And it had gotten this kind of like dry consistency on there where it almost felt like a face mask that was cracking. Like that was how thick it felt on my skin. And so um, I ended up taking the, the foundation off at like hour five because I just didn't want it on my skin at all. Like I felt like I was gonna be breaking out horribly afterward and so it just really did not go well. In my personal opinion with my type of skin type which is I have combination skin uh, where especially around my nose and my cheeks I get very in my chin I get very oily just like on the like the peak spots and then I get dry like in the the creases of my nose and then around my temples and the sides of my face and so I have to usually use like a hydrating primer underneath and then go in with two different types of foundation to kind of even it out and I found that just using the KVD foundation it, it did not go well and so I felt like for me that product was way too overhyped and was not worth the $38. I can't really imagine ever wanting to use this ever again after you know the three or four times that I did use it and so it was for sure a waste of money which was very disappointing. But then let's move on to the Fenty foundation and this guy is the Ease Drop 
blurring skin tint, I would imagine. Uh, so mine is in the shade nine. I was actually really pleasantly surprised with that guy. I mean, I don't know why pleasantly surprised considering that I love like every other <laughs> Fenty foundation that I have used. And so I, I really shouldn't be surprised by that at all. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> I thought that it worked really, really well. It's applied very, very nicely. I did need a decent amount to get like a good amount of coverage on there just because for whatever reason, I mean, it's super light coverage. And so you, you would wanna build it up to get a certain amount beyond just like light coverage. Um, so I think that's kind of my only gripe with it is that I prefer, a foundation that's like a cross between like light and medium and so if it's super duper light foundation where I have to build up a lot of it then I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose for me because I'm not wanting to cake it on to get the coverage level that I am desiring and so I think in that regard I would prefer the other two Fenty foundations uh, that I have, which I have the soft matte and then I also have the hydrating. And the hydrating foundation is my favorite from Fenty. It is super duper nice, goes on like a dream. I love that. And for shade reference with the hydrating foundation, I am the shade 185 so that you guys can kind of <laughs> know what skin like shade I am for that. My only concern would be that because I did have to use so much of it, like I, I wanna, so to dispense it, it's got like this little tubey thing and then you just kind of squeeze it out. And I had to do like five or six squeezes of the tube to get the amount of product out that I wanted. And they were like decent squeezes, almost dime size on my hand each time what I was getting on there. Whereas with the other Fenty foundations, one and a half pumps is all that I need and full coverage for the whole face. And so I think that was the only thing where I was a little bit frustrated was with the amount of product. And so even though it's not super duper expensive, I have a feeling I'm gonna go through it faster than I would have the other Fenty foundations, then it might not be as worth the money. But I felt like the product itself, when you had built it up, was very, very nice. And it didn't feel cakey at any point. It wasn't overly hydrating where my face looked like an oil slick. It was just a very nice, like healthy looking finish, which I thought was very, very nice. Uh, with this foundation, unlike with the KVD Beauty one, after quite a few hours of wearing it, didn't really notice any change as far as that it was sitting any differently on my face. It wasn't like getting cakey or patchy or anything like that. It was just really kind of looking the same as what it did when I first applied it. I wasn't noticing anything around my nose, which is usually the first area that goes. So I think that one's worth it. Um, if you like kind of a semi satin type finish on there with light coverage, you're really gonna like that product. And so I thought it was worth it. So then the next product is from Urban Decay. We have this guy. And this is supposed to be a hydrating foundation. It's a tinted glow hydrator, medium coverage. They say up to 24 hour wear. I never buy that, at least for me. Like it's never gonna be 24 hour because as soon as I go to the gym, I'm gonna sweat it all off anyway. So, uh, and mine was in the shade 41 light medium, which is what I grabbed. And I can 100% say that this guy was like three shades too dark for me. So probably need to just go with the light on that one. <laughs> I also did not feel like it was a hydrating finish at, at all. When you first were applying it, it definitely looked hydrating, but then after you were done like applying it and it was just sitting there, it had like more of a satin finish than anything else, but definitely not hydrating by any means. Like I did not feel like I looked like I had any level of glow going on. It does say that it is medium coverage and I would agree with that. It did a decent job of covering up like some of my skin imperfections that I have. I will say though that as I was applying it, it did take a little while 
to blend out like it was it's not one of those products where as you're applying it that it like blends out really really easy like wherever you put it that was kind of where it would stay and you really had to work hard to blend it out uh, to where it wouldn't look just like splotches of color wherever you had placed it and so that's a level of effort that I am not particularly a fan of and so it took a lot more time to apply the foundation than what it normally does for me to apply. I think my my biggest critique with it uh, was that after having it on for like a couple hours, it started to show my pores a little bit more, not as badly as the KVD Beauty one did, but it was definitely like already noticeable that my pores were starting to show up. The biggest issue that I had is I have fairly deep fine lines in my forehead where like, they really show up as I wrinkle or like if I'm like looking up at something with my head down and so that is like one of the first things where I notice if I'm gonna see like cracks in the foundation it would be with that but the Urban Decay one it really really was showing up with that and so I was a little bit frustrated just because I am not a fan of being able to see my fine lines that way. It does retail for only $29 and so out of all of them it is the cheapest uh, if by only 50 cents off of the Fenty one. I definitely just didn't feel like it was worth it. I was pretty disappointed with the product just in, in general. Just on my skin, it didn't sit there very well. But now onto the last one, which is the Chantikai. And this is the Future Skin Cushion. Mine is in the shade of Vanilla. And already this packaging, super duper nice. When you open it up, you have a really cute little mirror. You also have a little spiongy. And this is actually what I use to apply it. I found that just dabbing into the cushion and then pressing it into my skin had the the best effect uh, rather than trying to use a sponge or a brush or anything else. And you just pop open the lid and there is the cushion. It does also come with a second cushion as well. And so you are essentially getting double the amount of product for what you're paying for, which I suppose is good because um, as with all luxury brands, it is super duper expensive. And so you are paying $128 for the two cushions and the packaging. So since they do give you two, that would amount out to $64 per cushion, which is still definitely on the pricey side. But for luxury brands, if you compare that to like how much a company like Tom Ford would be charging or how much you are paying with some other luxury brands like Dior and Chanel and things like that, I think that it is kind of around the same price range as those guys. And so you're not paying too much beyond that since you are getting double the amount. And when I tell you that that foundation is full on sorcery, uh, I don't understand what was happening <laughs> as I was applying it. It's actually what I have on my face right now um, and has very quickly become my absolute favorite foundation because it is nuts. I don't understand what is happening as I am applying it. It literally is like your skin. Like you don't look like you have product on. It just flawless goes on super duper nice, very nice finish to it. It's not overly greasy, not overly matte. It's like the best of all worlds. And so I, oh my goodness, I absolutely loved it. Oh, I was so, so happy to find finally one luxury foundation that actually wanted to work for me. And I just, I legitimately, like the first time that I was trying it out, I was like, okay. So I had seen another YouTuber, Jen from Just Glow Firefly. She had actually, she was the first person that I saw use it. And then I saw Teresa's dad also used it because Teresa just dead, she's like Teresa just loves Chantikai. And so everything that comes out with that brand, you go to her channel, you will find a review on it. So after watching both of them and how Jen was saying that she just used the cushion that came with the product and I gotta be honest, it definitely worked. Like I didn't feel like I needed to grab a sponge or anything else like it. It just immediately went on really, really easily, like no problem at all. And so I just, oh man. I I still can't believe like how nice it turned out. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> like 
I, I am still kind of trying to figure out what was even going on as I was applying it. So it helps to blur everything out. I would not say that it's like a medium coverage. It is a lighter coverage. And so you can definitely still see like where I have freckles and things like that on my face. So I've just been using the crap out of it, which is probably not the best thing because with it being so expensive, I should perhaps be attempting to like make it last, but it just looks so, so good. And so I have to keep using it because <laughs> My skin is never gonna look that nice in real life. That's kind of where we're at on that one. Like I need to just use it all the time. <laughs> Filming at night when I have to have the ring light on because I have no other time throughout the day to film. <laughs> Here we are. All right, so I'm gonna come in close so you guys can see the final eye look that I did with all of the sparkles. So I went with all of the like different blues and greens on the top of the lid. And then I went with the copper and red shades on the under eye. As per usual, I am not upset about any of it because I love Glam Shop and I love all, I mean, their shimmers especially, like their mattes are really, really nice and blend out very well, but their shimmers are like a thousand percent worth it. Like if, if you guys have not picked up a Glam Shop palette yet, I can only suggest doing it because it is so, so worth it. <laughs> I would love to know what you guys think about the Laguna palette, about any of these foundations. Um, if you guys have tried any of them out, what did you guys think? I would love to know because this is just, <laughs> out of all four of them, I would recommend both of these. Just they, I mean, this one probably is the most affordable one that you'll get with a really nice satiny type finish, very light coverage, um, but feels very light. You're, you're not feeling like it's cakey or anything like that. So definitely recommend this guy. If you are able to go a little bit more on the pricey end of all of the luxury brands that I have tried, this is the only one that I was able to get to work with my skin type. And so I would recommend that. I would not recommend getting it if you can't afford it. Like, please do not be buying things if you can't afford them. But I'm just shocked that I actually found a luxury brand that works for me because as we know from any of my past luxury makeup videos, luxury foundations don't typically do anything good for me. So I'm very excited that I finally found a brand where it's like, okay, it worked out really well. <laughs> but I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the foundations, the Luna palette, all of it. I would love to know. There is still a few more days left for you guys to sign up for the giveaway on my last video. So make sure you guys go and check that out if you have not yet already. I am giving away one entire set of the neutral lip clays as well as one of the lip masks. And so if you are interested in winning that, go sign up on that video. You guys have until this Saturday to sign up. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you did not, let me know either way. I just wanna know what you guys think. And if you made it to the end of this video and you have not yet subscribed, I would sure love it if you would subscribe. Come check out my family on here. We love talking about makeup so, so much. Talk about lots of indie brands, thus the Laguna palette. But I just, for whatever reason, was really feeling like talking about foundations today. So we talked about some mainstream foundation brands and yeah, <laughs> we do it all out here. And if you guys have any suggestions on things that you would like to see, please by all means toss it down in the comments. I love trying to come up with videos that you guys are wanting to see. So yeah, that is that. And other than that, you guys just go have a good one.